This is Miss Bowman. As you can see, I'm back in the kitchen today with another recipe and my apron that says the trouble with um, Italian food is that you're hungry again in three days. Yeah, about right. Yeah. I'm trying to read this upside down. It doesn't work out very good. So today I am doing a recipe that was given to me by the Real Cobra Burnout. And I'm missing an ingredient. Hang on. <clears throat> Coming at you from the snake pit. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is a recipe that was in his, uh, that he gave to me. It's called Zesty Italian Crescent Casserole, um, aka Paul Newman's Casserole. Or known as Bachelor Surprise. <laughs> And I guess that there could be very many variations to this as to how you want to go about putting this casserole together. Okay, main ingredients that you're gonna need. One pound of hamburger, and um, I've already got it cooked and drained, and also I put an onion. It calls for a quarter cup of onion, but I like a little bit more onion, so I put a half a cup of onion on there. And I'm sorry I don't have the overhead cam today. Battery shot. Okay, moving on. We've got two tablespoons of butter or margarine. You are going to get some mozzarella cheese and you're going to need about a cup and a half. I'm going to use two. Why? Because I'm all about the cheese. You're also going to need some Parmesan. Okay, that's going to be a third cup of that. And then you're going to need, I did this very sloppily I might add, a half a cup of sour cream. And then, of course, you're going to need some spaghetti sauce. Well, being that it's Paul Newman's recipe, I try Paul Newman's sauce. This is a first. Sauce out of a jar, folks. Doesn't happen. Yeah. I usually make my own. Well, words yep. Here. <laughs> Very much so. And then you're going to need some crescent rolls. Uh, I got the uh, big and flaky ones. So what you want to do is make sure to cook up your hamburger and your onions, drain the excess grease, make sure that you have a big enough pan, I believe this is 9 by 13 I think, um, but you're going to put everything in. Preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Now this is the first time that I'm doing this recipe so if I kind of go off the rails and like what's happening? Why? Because I haven't tried it before. I thought, hey, why not just do it? And while I'm making it, record it. So there we go. So we got the first part done where it says we're going to brown the hamburger and the onions, drain the grease, um, and then you're going to add the sauce. And then what you're going to do is spread that mixture into your pan here. So let me move that over. <clears throat> Now, you're, you don't have to use the whole 24 ounces that are in the jar. I think it calls for a little bit less, and I can't recall off the top of my head how much less. Uh, I'm going to switch pans here, however, because I feel that that one is not going to do the trick. Hope everybody's weekend's are going good. I haven't had a chance to get out and shoot my my new gun, the one that I got for my birthday present on my previous video, because today we woke up to snow, if you can believe that. Snow. And cold. And cold. 27 degrees was the high day. I'm wondering if spring is ever going to get here. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and use the whole jar. A little bit of extra sauce probably won't hurt it. Alright, put that aside and let's give this a mix. Oh, 
want to turn this on medium heat to start off with because it kind of needs to heat up. It's almost kind of just a, it kind of reminds me of like a sloppy joe mixture in a way. And if you didn't want to use hamburger, by the way, you probably could use sausage or, um, I don't know, maybe if you wanted to use like chicken and or something else that floats your boat, you most certainly could. All right, I'm gonna let that heat up there just for a minute. And this will make a seven to nine servings and it's going to take about 18 to 20 minutes in your oven, depending upon how your oven works. And uh, while I'm waiting for that to heat up, would you like to open this for me? I have like the worst time trying to get these open. <laughs> So, I'm asking KB. Well, you're usually pretty good at it. You can get it to work like it's supposed to. I never can really get it to work like it's supposed to. No, I'm just saying. Oh, hockey season is winding down. Although, I have to say, I haven't been able to watch too much of it. Thank you. I'm just going to leave this kind of been busy with kind of other things lately. All right, make sure that I get that all together and that every, all the sauce is coating the hamburger. All right, okay. So we got that going. And then the next thing you're gonna do is make sure to put it in a pan. But the pan that we're gonna use, it says not to grease the bottom of it. Okay. All right. I heard Travis has that tattoo. Huh? I heard Travis has that tattoo. Tattoo? Yeah, you're not supposed to grease the bottom. Uh-oh. Oh, really? Seriously? Okay. <laughs> And then we're going to combine the mozzarella cheese and sour cream and spread that over um, the mixture. So I'm going to grab a little bowl for that too. Actually, probably I think I'll just do that in the bowl. In the bowl. You failed, KB. I did? Yeah. Can you get me a bowl? My second I tell you. Good help is hard to find. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, so mozzarella, cheese, sour cream. So this is a two cup package. And like I said, it only calls for a cup and a half, but you know me, I'm all about the cheese. So I'm gonna use that little extra. And let me get me a self a spoon here. Actually, I probably a little bit. I think what to be used would be a spatula at this point. I have one jar with like all my utensils in it, and it's not organized very well. There we go. Okay. Got that all in there together. That's about one, so let me just turn that down and let's keep that warm. Look, it's a wooden spoon. Oh Joey cuz. <laughs> Childhood flashback. <laughs> Childhood flashback. <laughs> okay, we'll mix this together. I just couldn't resist saying that. He had commented on that in one of my other videos. <laughs> I don't know. We might have to check with them on that one. Okay. Got that together. So there we go. Sour cream and mozzarella cheese is together. I'm thinking too, if you wanted to, you probably could use some ricotta cheese. 
that would probably work just as well. I'm just going to rinse off my spoon here. Okay, so let's take and put this in the pan. Now I've got everything heated up so nicely, I might add. Okay. And then you're just going to take and spread this out like so. You could probably add anything else to it that you wanted, not just onions. Maybe that you want some onions and peppers. Maybe you'd want some mushrooms in it. Um, there's all kinds of vegetables that I'm sure that you could probably add to this to make the recipe your own. All right. And so we got that. And then we're going to spread this over the meat mixture. This is all going to kind of come out in one dollop. Or a clump, I should say. Sometimes just using your hands is the best thing. Yeah, I think this would be good too with ricotta. It's a very interesting combination and it seems like it's a pretty simple ingredients. Get that all over there. Take a moment here to rinse off my hands. And the next step should be placing our crispy croissant, crescent roll dough on the top. Okay, so we're just going to place this over the top. do this fairly easily and fairly well. Get that first one going. Not quite sure exactly how this is going to all lay out, but I'll try to make do. here. I'm going to pop this on the counter. Yes, my counter is clean. Thank you very much. And I guess the idea is to try to get that in there much to the shape of the pan. Okay, sorry about that. We had a little technical difficulty. The battery ran out. All of a sudden, I look up and I'm like, "Hey, camera's not working anymore." Anyways, I finished this off. You need like a tech guy. Or something. Yeah, a real tech guy, a real KB. Jeez. Um, I know that you could probably make that look a heck of a lot better than what I did there. You could probably cut it into more squares and take the time to put it on there a little bit better. So the last thing that you have is the butter or margarine and the Parmesan cheese. So what I'm going to do is just kind of cut this into little chunks, place this on here throughout the top of this. And then, excuse me, sprinkle on the Parmesan cheese last. Now, like I said, I haven't tried this recipe before, so I'm kind of fumbling through it. But I like the, the simplicity of it because you can, like I said, make it your own variation by adding whatever you like to it as well. So. I think that's the beauty with uh, the recipes that are simple that don't um, necessarily require a lot of ingredients. I think it makes it 
much easier to turn it into something of your own liking. And oh, there we go. Let's get the little last bits on here. That one didn't have very much. So. All right. Then you're going to sprinkle on your parm. And of course, if you like a little bit more Parmesan cheese, then uh, by all means, use a little bit more Parmesan cheese. You know, everything is to taste. There we go. A little bit there on the corner. And I think we're good to go. So. I think that is what is the last step. Let me just double check. Okay. All right. And then it gets popped in the oven um, at 375 degrees. Sorry, I'm nosy. Clear my dishes. And then that will be in there for about 18 to 20 minutes. And then we'll be back to see what the final product will look like and taste like. I'm kind of curious. All right. Be back in a moment. Okay, I am back in the kitchen and it is done. I'm going to grab my mittens here. Uh, in my oven, it took about 20 minutes. And this is what it looks like. All done. Uh, I let it sit for like a minute because I didn't want to like try to cut into it too soon. Let me give it a cut. Oh, it's nice and flaky. It's just like the real cocoa burnout. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that, kitchen bitch did. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Okay. See if I can get this out in like one solid scoop here. Wow, look at the cheese on that, eh? Nice, nice. Okay. There you go. That's what it looks like completed. Okay. That's it. That is the recipe. <clears throat> Once again, that is called the Zesty Italian Crescent Casserole, or Paul Newman's Casserole, if you'd like. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a taste. One of the reasons why I just did this on camera and not did it like ahead of time and made it once before, before I was doing this on camera, um, it's just to show you that it doesn't matter like how many ingredients in the recipe that there is, just Give it a try. See what you can make of it. Don't be afraid to do it. Do it. Just do it like the Nike commercial says. Just do it. Okay, I'm gonna get a little bit of the topping here. Some, some cheese, some hamburger, some sauce. Mmm. That was really good. Sorry, you don't mean to talk with my mouthful. It's very good. Very good. You have to try this, KB. Okay. So, that's it. Like I said, don't be afraid to try it. Try this recipe, any recipe. Once again, I want to say thank you to The Real Carbo Barner for sharing this recipe with us. And... Try not to kill myself or anybody else in the kitchen for that matter. I can't help every time with my hands. And that's it. Um, other than that, I got nothing. Yeah, you do? Mm-hmm. Nothing. Done. Nothing coming up? Oh. Um, yeah, I'm just going to mention this because this probably is like one of those things that's never going to happen again. Um, KB, most of you know, some of you know, has um, 
a radio blog show that airs at Thursday night at 8 o'clock central time, 8, <coughs> 8 to 10 central time. And um, this week's guest is me. So, um, yeah, make sure not to show up for that. Thank you. <laughs> I don't even know what our topic is going to be or anything. I'm sure it'll be a surprise. Anyways, that's it. I got nothing else. I'm going to go enjoy this delicious casserole. And until then, this is Miss Bomi saying good night, good eats, wherever you are. <laughs>